Alright, man. Alright, man. We back into this motherfucking book, man. Monster Cody LA Game Man Part 1, man. This is the preface or the introduction. The introduction page, man. We ain't finna read all the girt, all the. You know, this nigga wanted to be like a Muslim, all type of revolutionary. He done put all type of goofy shit in this. We really gonna be reading the PowerPoints, the real. The shit that the. the the beef of the fucking book. We not reading all the, the muscles, all the fat. We just gonna read the beef. We re pure protein in this book. We only reading the protein. Only the shit that we want to hear. It's not like I'm cutting it out or nothing. But you know, I'm gonna skip all the shit we don't want to hear. You know, but I'm gonna read the entire book. We gonna read it, in it read it in its entirety. You, feel? I gotta talk more like a human. Y'all wanna, you know, there's people out here who ain't gonna understand i'm from florida and shit so i slur my words so i'm gonna try to be as you know i'm gonna try to talk as proper as possible with reading this book and i will be giving my side comments i will be stopping to make comments as i read it so if you don't you know if you want to be a goof ass jit hate get off the page we ain't reading just reading we finna we finna get y'all motherfucking reactions we finna get y'all some content we finna get y'all how i feel about this shit a fucking summary after every fucking you know so listen man preface helicopters hover heavily above often no higher than the treetops that dot the battlefield staccato vibrations of automatic gunfire crack throughout the night drowned out by explosions and sirens people hustle quickly past in a dangerous attempt to get away the fighting happens to be heaviest there is troop movement throughout the city and in some areas the fighting is intense the soldiers are engaged in a civil war, a war without terms, a war fought by any means necessary with anything at their disposal. This conflict has not lasted nine years longer than not Vietnam. Throughout the setting, it's not jungle per se. It's, the atmosphere is as dangerous, mysterious as any jungle in the world. Neither side receives funding from any government nor does either side claim any allegiance to any particular region or socio socioeconomy system of government. There are no representatives from either factions in the United Nations, nor does either side recognize the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Recruitment or considerations began at what the fuck? Conscriptions began at eleven years of age. Oh, he basically trying to say, man. What gang is like, bro? We pretty much in these streets. We ain't got no government ain't fucking with us. We just out here get banging and killing with no supervision, with no, well, you know, lawlessness. You know what the fuck you're talking about. Squads of five usually make raids into neighborhood territories for primitive strikes or retaliatory hits on enemies and targets useful t to the opposition. Although both armies are pre predominantly made up of males, there are many females involved in the fighting. These infrastructures were built initially on robberies and extortion. Today, however, they are maintained by proceeds from major narcotics deals and distribution throughout America. Each army has its distinct territory. The boundaries of some very large areas are broken by enemy clusters camps. Each camp has a flag to which total allegiance is pledged. Each army has its own language, customs, and philosophy, and has its own GNP. GNP means money. The war has begun raging on for 22 years. The death toll is in the thousands, wounded, un <laughs> unaccountable, missing in action, unthinkable. No one is keeping a tally. No one has noticed except for those recently involved in the fight and those indirectly drawn in by geographical or location economic status or family association other than this the war has been kept from the world hidden like an ugly, a ugly scar across the belly of an otherwise beautiful woman under the, the the guise of being a showpiece for the world where prosperity is easily found as water in a stream america for all her obstacle beauty has an ugly scar across her belly that she has tried to repeatedly to suppress and keep hidden from conscious onlookers more than a few times she has almost been exposed and it's this ugliness brought to light but always another garment will quickly be thrown over the rough spot and all the turmoil and ugliness again blanketed but not this time on april 
29, 1992, the world witnessed the eruption of South Central Los Angeles, the concrete jungle battlefield of Crips and Bloods, the scar of over 20 years that had been tucked out of sight and passed off as just another ghetto problem, burst its scripture and spilled blood all across the stomach of America. People watched in amazement as gang members, soldiers of Crips armies, pelted cars with rocks, sticks, and bottles, eventually pulling civilians from their cars, beating them. This was hours after they had routed a contingent of LA, LA, LAPD officers. Troop movement escalated and Los Angeles was set ablaze. All this begun, began on Florence and Normandy and South Central, the, the latest third world battlefield. Mm. I had lived in South Central Los Angeles all my life. I grew up on Florence and Normandy. Normandy. That is part of my ter territory. I was recruited into the Crips at the ripe old age of 11. Today, I am 29 years old. I am a game expert. <laughs> game expert, huh? There are no other game experts except participants. Our lives, more customs, and philosophies remain as mysterious, as untouched as those of any uncivilized tribe in Africa. I have come full circle in my 29 years on this planet, 16 of those with the Crips. I have pushed, I have pushed people violently out of this existence and have fathered three children. I have felt completely free and have sat in total solitary confinement in San Quentin State Prison. I have shot numerous people and have been shot seven times myself. I have been in gunfights in South Central, knife fights in Folsom State Prison. Today, I, I languish at the bottom of one of the strictest maximum security state prisons of the, in this country. I propose to take my reader throughout the life and times of my chilling involvement as a gang member with the Crips. I propose to my mind as wide as possible to allow my readers the first ever glimpse at South Central from my side of the gun, street, fence, and wall from my initial extraction and recruitment to my first shooting and my rise to ghetto star celebrity status. Right up to South Central Rebellion, the troops began the warring factions, the Crips and Bloods. Although no, lo no longer aligned with gang or criminal activity, I still draw a great deal of support from, the, from, these, from this quarter. Come with me then, if you will, down a side street lined with stolen cars, youngsters armed with shotguns and 38 revolvers lying in wait for the enemy. All members of a small gang then return with five years later as possible. A street line with luxury cars, dope dealers, troops with AK-47, assault weapons, the gang now at army. Let me tell you of funerals that have been overrun by enemy forces and the body stolen and killed again for no... What the fuck? Physiological warfare. What psychological warfare? See, these niggas in LA tweaking like... I mean, this is a part where I gotta stop. Like, come on now. Come on now. Y'all niggas... Oh my God. And they talk about us... I'm millennial shit with these smoking dead ops. You niggas was taking y'all ops out the casket. Come on now. And what the fuck? And it's the 90s and 80s. So y'all, that, that was cool then. Y'all smoking crack and then blowing y'all off down and taking them out the casket in front of they peoples. In front of they old girl, they auntie, they girlfriend, they, they daughter. <laughs> I swear, boy, the world be hypocrites. That's crazy. Think not that this war has some... As some passing phrase is to be ignored out with a truce in five days impossible. Has not by any means passed the gangs of Los Angeles surveillance. Communication and technology has now found their way into the military buildup of these two armed factions. It is not for glory that I write this. It is our desperations for the survival of youths and civilians who are directly and indirectly involved in the fighting. I will attempt to draw seriousness analytical conclusions designed to bring out a better, more in-depth understanding of this malady so to help reach workable solutions for all concerned. As with my life, I propose bring the reader full circle to show the reality a city gone mad and attempt to rank as the nation's myrtle capital longer than the district, the district of Columbia more consistently than Detroit. Look then, if you dare, at South Central through the eyes of one of its most notorious ghetto stars and architects of his most ghastly gang army, the Crips. 
the, the, this nigga tootin' the fuck out his own horn and this motherfucker like, yeah, I was the most gangster motherfucker in the world. Yeah, boy, I'm the I'm the look take look through my eyes. The biggest ghetto star, I done smoke more niggas than <laughs> the Grim Reaper himself. I done put more niggas in woods than motherfucking <laughs> The Cyrac Grim Reaper, like, <laughs> like God damn, my dude. I get it, my boy. I ain't gonna lie. Hey, hey, you did what you had to do. I ain't gonna. I can't. I can't. I can't knock you. You had to do what you had to do. The way you, the way you setting up this book, you making it sound like your ass. He making it sound like, boy, we really in the trenches. We really this shit like Vietnam. Come on, dude. My fucking ain't throw your no grenade through your window. <laughs> All right, man, let's go to the next chapter, Initiation. June 15, 1975, I proudly strolled across the wax hardwood stage of the auditorium at the 54th Street of the Mitchell School under the beaming stairs of my mother, aunt, and Uncle Clarence, taking my assigned place next to Joe Johnson. As we had rehearsed for a week, I felt very different, older, more attached than any of my fellow classmates. This feeling made me stand more erect made me seem more important than any of my peers on stage, even Joe Johnson, who was the king of the school. Looking back now, it's quite amusing to remember how proud I was, how superior I felt next to Joe Johnson. I felt since my radical departure from childhood when I was suspended a month before graduation, driven home by Mr. Smotherman, the principal, not allowed to go to the the grad class outing for flashing the gang sign on the school pair Parama picture. Mr. Smotherman was appalled and accused me of destroying the perfectly good picture, not to mention that I was starting to show signs of moral decay. Actually, half the things Mr. Smotherman told me I didn't catch because I wasn't listening. And besides, my mind had been made up weeks prior to my having gotten caught flashing the gang sign at the picture. I expected to get away with flashing on a photograph is beyond me. But two, it points up my serious intent even then, for I was completely sold on becoming a game member. As our graduation activities bore on, my disinterest and annoyance at its silliness escalated. I was eager to get home to my hood and meet my moral obligation to my new set of friends who made Joe Johnson look weak. After the seemingly year-long graduation, my mom, aunt, and uncle Clarence got congratulated me with lunch at, Bi- at Bob's Big Boy. I was the second youngest in my family of six. Everyone named began with K. My brothers was Kevin, Kerwin, and Krishan, youngest. Kim and Candace were my sisters. My father, I never got along with. I couldn't understand why he mistreated me. While returning home, I sat transfixed to the side window looking out into the streets but seeing anything in particular just wishing my uncle Clarence would drive faster tonight was to be my initiation night and I didn't want to be late or miss out on any activities that might occur during my first night on duty Bending in the corner onto the block in my uncle's Monte Carlo I sucked down in the back seat to avoid being seen in my white knit suit and tie picking to make sure the coast was clear I bolted to my mom's room and the house down the hall into my room for a quick change. What's your goddamn problem, boy? <laughs> Bellow mom from the hallway. I know you don't think you're going out anywhere until you clean up that funky room, taking out the trash. <laughs> OG, just like my OG. I never heard the rest. I was out the window and the wind steaming toward my destiny. Only thing in my in this life that has ever held my attention for any serious length of time. The streets. <laughs> This ass was a motherfucker. Huddling from the day one, huh? Stop it once I've got around the block to collect my coolness. I met up with Trey Ball, who was accepted my membership and agreed to sponsor me in. What up, cuz? Trey Cuz extended his very dark, muscular, veined hand. This is shit I don't get. Like, how you, like, come on, dude. How you remember Trey Ball got a muscular, veined hand? That what you, like, that what you looking at? At 12? Ain't nothing I responded, trying to hide my utter and mad um, admiration for this cat who is quickly becoming a ghetto star a ghetto star is a neighborhood celebrity known for game banging drug dealer or so on so what's for the night i am still in or what yeah you won't as we walked to the shack in silence i took full advantage of the streets we were again from onlookers who couldn't seem to make the connection between me and trayball the neighborhood hoodlum 
I took their looks as stares of recognition and respect. I was saying, it was staring at this nigga like, what the fuck this jit doing with him? He with that bad ass legit. Oh yeah, jit finna go to jail. I could already know the looks he talking about, boy. That jit, that, that look when you walking down the street with a motherfucker who you know still out the store 99% of the time. Everybody in the hood know he still bikes. He just do all type of bad hoodlum shit. He, he, he climb on school roofs, all that shit. I could just, I know what he talking about. At the shack, which we would actually a back house behind Trey Ball's house, I bet Huckabuck, who was a dark athletic, very physical and awesome fighter. He came to California from New York, asset included. For the most part, he was quiet. Lupercon, who was Lupertron, what the fuck they call that nigga? Lupertron, who we, we gonna call that nigga Lep. Lep was there. I had known him prior to this as he went to school with my older brother Lep, had a very missing had a missing front tooth and a slightly bill, fiercely loyal to Trey Ball. Lep stood to be second in command. Then there was Fly, who dressed cool with an air of style, like a plush and handsome. He was a ladies' man, not necessarily vicious, but was gaining a reputation by company he kept. Next was GC, which stood for Gangsta Cool. Gangsta GC was possibly the most well off member present, meaning he had things. Things our parents couldn't afford to give us. He gained banging Stacy Adams shoes. What's your name, homeboy? Huggerbutt asked from across the room through a cloud of marijuana smoke. Cody. My name's Cody. Cody. They're already they're already a Cody from the nineties, dude. I already knew this from hearing his name. Yeah, but my real name is Cody. My mama named me that. Everybody looked at me when I squirmed under their stress, but I held my ground. To flinch now would possibly mean expulsion. What well, Huck said with disbelief, your mother named you Cody? Yeah, no shit, I replied. Righteous, fuck it. Then we'll, we'll back you with it. But you gotta put in work. Put in work means a military mission to hold it. To hold it, cause that's a hell of a name. Fly, fly piped up from his relaxed posture in the armchair. I'm gonna put some work in tonight for the set. We know, let me reply, we know. Damn, that's how they used to do it in L.A. They The first night, like, what's good, boy? They don't even pass you the joint before they say, man, well, we finna go smoke some niggas. Like, damn. I hope they got bro high. Y'all just finna go slide on the op just like that. Y'all ain't gonna give my dog a, a 40 ball, a, a 8 ball, no no bill. <laughs> y'all know y'all L.A. niggas love y'all bill. We don't do that down here in Florida. We don't drink bill when we smoke squares. Shit, just pass me a joint, boy. We can slide. Yeah. <laughs>